This question appeared on a video about how to copy tables from Excel into Word. And what Arvind wanted to know was how to add headers to the Word document, including a company logo picture, after pasting in the Excel data. So I've set up a basic example to demonstrate how this will work. I've got a basic Excel workbook with multiple worksheets, each of which contains a table and a chart. Now I've already written the basic code that will copy this content into a new Word document. So just to show you the basics of that in the Visual Basic Editor, it essentially loops through the worksheets collection and copies the table and the chart from each worksheet into a new page in that document. I'll drop a link in the video description so that you can download this file yourself and then follow along with me and write the code that I'm going to add. And just to demonstrate how this works, let's just see what it gives us if we run the subroutine. We should find a brand new Word document appears. And having pasted all the content, we have a separate page for each worksheet. And what we're going to do next is add the basic code that is going to add a header that has some simple text saying something like Wise Owl Movies. So let's close down this Word document and head back to the Visual Basic Editor. I won't bother saving the changes there. And just to help us write the code to manipulate the header that we're about to create, let's declare a variable that holds a reference to a Word header footer object. So I'm going to declare a variable called HDR as word.headerfooter. So you use the same class regardless of whether you're manipulating a header or a footer object. The variable isn't essential here, it just makes our life a little easier. Next, we can set this variable to refer to the header that we want to manipulate. And we'll do that after we finish pasting in all the content. So just after the end with statement, let's say set HDR equals. Then we need to refer to the document that contains the header we want to manipulate. So we'll use our doc variable to do that. Then we need to refer to a section within that document. So I'll use the sections property. Our document has only a single section. So we can refer to sections one and then the headers property within there. And then we have to pick from one of three different headers. So we've got the even pages, the first page and the primary header footer option. Initially, I want to affect all of the headers in the same way. So the headers on every single page should be set to the same. So I'm going to use the header footer primary option here. And then having done that, we can manipulate that header by referring to its properties. The main property we're going to be manipulating here is the range property. So I'm going to begin another with block and say with hdr.range give myself a couple of blank lines, scroll down a little so you can see what's going on, and then add the end with statement. And then inside here, let's do a couple of basic things. Let's set the text of our header. So I'm going to use the text property and make that equal to wise owl movies. Then maybe we'll have a new line character so we can concatenate a VB new line. And then let's also have a formatted version of today's date. So I'm going to use the format function and then refer to the date and then after a comma type in a date format so i'm going to see the full name of the day of the week a two digit day of the month the full month name and then the year as well okay so having done that let's just run our subroutine again and see what effect that has and what we should see of course is the same document but this time on each page of the document a header with the text that we've asked to display. Next, let's just change some basic formatting of the text we've added. We won't spend too long on this, but just to show you some of the basic things we can do, we'll head back to the Visual Basic Editor, and then inside the width block for the header range property, we can say things like dot font dot size equals 12. We could say dot font dot text color, and then I'm going to refer to the RGB property and make it equal to. Then if I press control and spacebar on the keyboard and type in the letters RGB, I can either use the RGB function and define the precise color I want, or just pick from one of the named colors in the list. So let's go with let's go with RGB tomato. Then we can make the font bold, so we can say dot bold equals true. And then let's also change the paragraph alignment. I want to right align the text in this header. So let's say dot paragraph format dot alignment equals WD align paragraph right. 
Okay, so having done that, we can head back to the existing Word document and close that one down without saving the changes. Then we can run the subroutine again and hopefully see a slightly differently formatted set of page headers when we look at the final Word document. So there we go, right aligned, bold text in a different font size and a different color. Now let's say that we wanted to have a different style of page header for the odd and even numbered pages in the document. To do that in Word, we could double click into the header section and choose the different odd and even pages option. To do this in VBA is similarly straightforward. Let's close down the header footer section and in fact close down that Word document without saving the changes. And then back in the Visual Basic Editor, before we start modifying the header options, let's change a property of the document's page setup. So we're going to say doc.pagesetup.oddandevenpagesheaderfooter equals true. So this allows us to specify different options for the odd and even numbered pages. I think the simplest thing to do here, rather than rewrite all of this code, is just to copy everything that we've done with the primary header footer, and then paste that in immediately below, and then change WD header footer primary. If I press Control and Spacebar while in these round brackets, I can choose WD header footer even pages. So the primary header footer will control all the odd numbered pages. This one will control all of the even numbered pages. Just to demonstrate that this is absolutely working, let's uh, change the color of the font. Let's say RGB and cornflower blue. And then let's change the paragraph alignment to WD align paragraph left. So it should be fairly obvious that we've manipulated the headers independently. Of course, you could change the text, change what's displayed, whatever else you wanted to do, but this should be sufficient to demonstrate that our changes have had an effect. So let's run the subroutine, and we should find that this time, when the document has finished creating itself, that we end up with a different header on the odd numbered pages, so that's our original primary header footer on the first page. On the second page, the first even numbered page, the text is in blue and left aligned. Now we could do a similar thing to affect the page header for the first page of the document differently. Again, if I double click into the header section, there's an option for a different first page header. Um, what I'm going to do to demonstrate that, if I close down that Word document, and I won't bother saving the changes, and then again, we have to set a property of the page setup of the document first. So let's say doc.pagesetup.different first page header footer equals true. So what we could do next is similar to what we've just done to affect the even numbered pages differently. Let's just copy the even page headers section and all the code we've written to manipulate that. And then we can change the section, sorry, the header type we're referring to there from even pages. We can refer to WD header footer first page. We could, of course, then change the text we're displaying. We could change the, uh, the color to make it obvious. Let's do something like RGB um, green, or let's go, let's go lime green, actually. It'll stand out a bit more. And then we can change the paragraph alignment. Let's go for paragraph center. Okay, so having done that, we could run this subroutine again. We will see when it finishes that on the first page of the document, we got a bright green centered header on the first odd numbered, sorry, the first even numbered page. We've got our left aligned blue header and on the first odd numbered page, our tomato colored right aligned header. Now, I think what I'd actually prefer to do for this document is not display a header on the first page at all. And to achieve that is really simple. If I close down the document without saving the changes, and then back in the Visual Basic Editor, we've already set the different first page header footer property, we can simply remove all of the code we've used here to assign a different header to the first page. So if we simply delete all that code completely, and then run the subroutine again, this time we should see that when the document appears, that we end up with no header on the first page of the document, but we still have our tomato colored right aligned on odd pages, blue colored left aligned on even pages, but no header at all on the first page. 
Next, let's insert an image into the primary page header. So I'd like to see a Wise Owl Company logo appear to the left-hand side of the odd numbered page headers. I've already got an image file saved in the same folder as this workbook. I'll let you provide your own image. You can insert whatever image you like. I'm going to go for this basic Wise Owl corporate logo. So to do that, I'm going to head back to the Visual Basic Editor. And again, it's going to help if we have a variable to refer to the shape that we're going to insert into that header. So back at the top of the subroutine, let's say something like dim sh as word.shape. Having done that, just towards the end of the section where we've set up our primary header, so just before we refer to the even pages header, I'm going to say set sh equals hdr.shapes.addPicture. Now there's only one compulsory parameter of the addPicture method. There are many other parameters we could provide a value for um, to control the positioning and the width and the height, but I'm going to do all of this afterwards. All I'm going to do here is provide the file name of the image I want to insert. So the image is stored in the same folder as this workbook, so I'm going to refer to this workbook.path and then concatenate to that the name of the image files. So that's wiseowl.jpg. I can then close the round brackets. And that's basically it. If I just want the image inserted at the same original size in the, in the extreme top left-hand corner of that section, then that will suffice. So let's see what happens when we run that subroutine. Let's just close down the initial document first. Don't bother saving the changes. Then back in the Visual Basic Editor, we can run this subroutine again. And when it's finished and we have our document, we should find that there's nothing on the first page. There's no image in the even numbered pages, but in the odd numbered pages, it's not perfect just yet, of course, but we've got our YSL company logo inserted into that section. Next, I'd like to change the size of the image so that it fits into the header section a little more neatly. Now I can change the width and the height properties of this image independently, but I don't want to risk distorting my image. So I'm going to start by locking the aspect ratio of the image and then just change the height property so that it sits neatly within that section. So to do that, I'm going to head back to the Visual Basic Editor. And then after I've created the shape, I'm going to say sh dot lock aspect ratio equals true, or MSO true, I should say. And then sh dot height equals, let's go for, let's go for 24. Having done that, if I head back to the document and then close that one down, don't bother saving the changes, and then run that subroutine again, we should see that when the entire thing is finished, scrolling down to the first odd numbered page, gives us a much smaller little logo sitting in the top left hand corner, but we haven't distorted it by changing just the height. Next, I'd like to insert an image into the even numbered page headers. For my example, I'm just going to use the same image file, but you're welcome to use a different one if you prefer. So let's start by heading back to the Visual Basic Editor and then we'll just copy and paste the three lines we've used to insert the first image and then paste that at the bottom of the subroutine just after we've set up the even numbered page header. And this would be sufficient to insert that image, but there, there would be a problem if I look back at the word document. If I insert this image in the same position, of course, it's going to lay over the text that we've added. So I want to reposition my image towards the right hand side. Now the way you control the position of an image, if I just double click into the primary page header or the odd page header, is you control the position of the image by using the left property of the object or the shape. So I can set the left property to be a bigger number to shift it more towards the right hand side of the page. So I guess one way we could do that is just by guessing what number we need to use here to move the shape sufficiently to the right. So we could say sh.left equals, then what should we say, 250, something like that. So that would shift it along to the right. Let's just have a look at what that does. If I head back to the document we've got open and then just close that one down without saving the changes. And then if we were to, excuse me, if we were to run this subroutine, 
when the document appears, we'll hopefully see that our image has been inserted into the even numbered pages and it has indeed been shifted towards the right. What I'd really like to do with this image is position it so that its right hand edge lines up exactly with the right hand margin of the page. The first thing I'm going to do to get this to work is change one of the image properties so that it is positioned relative to the right hand margin. So to do that we can head back to the Visual Basic Editor and before we attempt to set the left property we're going to say sh dot relative horizontal position equals and then we'll make this relative to the relative horizontal position right margin area. Okay, so having done that, if we for instance now said sh.left equals zero, that would set the left hand edge of the image to sit on the beginning of the right hand margin. So the image would be over here somewhere towards the right hand side. So I want to shift the image backwards towards the left, a distance equal to the width of the shape. So to make that work, I could say, again, I, I guess I could guess, I could say minus 100, for example, to shift it 100 uh, pixels or points back towards the left. I think it's points, the measurement units for the left property. But rather than guessing the number, I can simply refer to the sh.width property. So having done that, I can close down that version of the Word document. I won't bother saving the changes. And then we can run the subroutine again. And this time, when the document appears, we should end up with no header on the first page as we asked for, a right aligned image on the even numbered pages, and a left aligned image on the odd numbered pages. So there we go, there's how you add a header with images to a Word document created from Excel VBA. Hopefully that's enough information to answer the original question. I think it is, but if not, as always, feel free to carry on asking questions and I'll do my best to keep on answering them. Thanks very much for watching. See you next time.